Former NFL lineman Bart Oates recalls his days on the gridiron. In both practices and games, he took hundreds of blows to the head. If you're a football player, you're going to stay on the field unless someone takes you off. And that credos the likely cause behind the latest research published on traumatic brain injury in the NFL. It shows 40 percent of former players had some form of brain damage. We looked at 40 retired NFL players um, for signs of traumatic brain injury. And we found that um, approximately 43 percent had what we call um, objective evidence or evidence on advanced neuroimaging of traumatic brain injury. Dr. Frank Kennedy led the study, which presents the strongest link to date between brain injury and football. Most of the things that you see on, on, on ESPN or, or, or some of the other networks um, involve the, the use of looking for CTE or chronic traumatic encephalopathy, which can only be diagnosed at, at, you know, at autopsy. So this is one of the largest studies in living players. All of the participants played in the league for at least seven years. 50% showed serious issues with executive function, like problem solving and attention. 45% had trouble with memory and learning. The damage was evident in the brain's white matter. That's where nerves connect. So if you picture a light fixture, um, the light bulb would be doing the work. So that would be the gray matter. And the white matter would be the connector or the plug that goes from the light bulb to the outlet. If that plug is damaged by being pulled at over and over again, the light will no longer work. The study also suggested that the longer a player spent in the NFL, the more likely he was to show signs of a TBI. We're learning that subconcussive impacts have a cumulative effect over time. And what's happening is the body is being thrown, the head is being jolted, um, and the brain is sustaining an impact that we're not documenting at the time. The players involved in the study already had post-concussive symptoms. They weren't random picks. And other athletes analyzed with similar blows to the head, like Bart Oates, have showed no signs of TBI. I had a son that he played high school, and by the time he finished his, after his fourth concussion, we, we shut him down. So he had a, for some reason, he had a propensity for concussions. For some reason, I didn't. And that's one of the major questions in traumatic brain injury research overall, is there can, you can see two people who have the identical injury, but their outcome is vastly different. So we're really working at identifying what those factors are. For every piece of data uncovered, doctors say it leaves more questions to be answered. Both NFL players and neurology experts condone limiting contact in the sport, especially for youth, until more is known. For NJTV News, I'm Brianna Venozzi.